Hello, folks. Thank you for joining us again this week on Education Matters. We have another special guest that you will appreciate hearing from. She, uh, her name is Michelle Lavelle, and she is with the Network for Educational Opportunity. Thank you, Michelle, for joining us today. Thank you for inviting me. So if you could just let us know what your organization is doing, um, a little bit about it, and um, and we can do we do have a video to play today for the for the folks at home and um, we can do that after you introduce yourself sure uh, my name is Michelle Lavelle I am a volunteer for the Network for Educational Opportunity uh, I am officially their outreach coordinator uh, I handle a lot of their social media and reaching out to the homeschool uh, potential applicants and other people who would like to apply for the scholarship Great. So this is about scholarships, folks, and you'll want to be very um, um, paying attention here because you might be a candidate for your child to have a scholarship to a private school or a scholarship for homeschooling materials. Um, so, John, if you wouldn't mind playing that video, that'd be great. Well, I was uh, trying to find scholarship opportunities for my twins. Uh, this was their senior year and uh, wanted to be able to keep them in the school that they were currently attending. As a result of some financial setbacks, that was not going to be possible. Families make choices every day, right? From the food that they buy at the grocery store, to the car that they buy, to their children's preschool and college. Um, I think families should have that same choice in K-12 through education as well. Schools often will have financial aid budgets, but most schools have limited resources. And so NEO can bridge the gap between where financial aid might end and where a family might need additional assistance to be able to take advantage of educational opportunities. A family can use the scholarship at a public school outside of their district or a private school or for homeschooling. And really, ultimately, that's to empower them so that they're making the choices in their children's education and not constrained or trapped by their zip code. Without the scholarship monies granted to us from NEO, the twins would not have been able to attend the schools respectively that they've learned to love over the over the last few years. Uh, it was a godsend. I think school choice is important. I think it's vital, in fact, um, because not every student learns exactly the same way. And so it's important for me to make sure that there are opportunities for students to go where that education fits them best. I think they help to destroy the myth that independent schools serve only a small segment of the community. Independent schools are there to provide options for all members of the community. When they get to the point of saying, is this something that I can manage financially, NEO is there to help support them in this. I realized that um, the demand is there, that families really are looking for education for options for their children, and that children shouldn't be trapped by their zip code in education but rather we should look at education as not a building, but, but an idea, right? Okay, folks, now we've seen the video, and Michelle can tell us all about it, and what else we need to know as far as how to apply or how, how, how this program all works. This is new to me. Sure. Uh, the Network for Educational Opportunity is a registered 501c3, so it is a charitable organization. It uses private donations from businesses and individuals to fund scholarships for underprivileged K-12 through students across the state. So uh, businesses can make uh, a private donation and it would then, uh, they would earn a tax credit against their business profit tax or uh, their business enterprise tax up to 85%. So for example, a $25,000 donation to NEO would per, uh, create an estimated tax savings uh, in excess of $23,800 for the business. So it's a win-win. It uh, helps needy K through 12 families to find a school of, that better fits their kids' learning needs and goals, and the business uh, gets to have the tax credit. Mm -hmm. Is there an income level specifically? I'm sure the folks at home are wondering what the cutoffs are. Sure. Um, the scholarship recipient families have to earn no more than 300% of the federal poverty level 
uh, so that it is a needs-based scholarship program. And uh, as we saw in the video, it doesn't co uh, cover the entire cost of of uh, most private schools, but it certainly bridges that gap. So we often refer to this as a bridge scholarship. Mm -hmm. So it can make up that difference of what a family could afford of that tuition, um, could not afford of that tuition, and then actually make it a reality mm -hmm. for these families. Now I know when they use these percentages of the poverty rate or whatever they use, what does 300 percent actually mean in dollars? Do you know? Uh, it depends on the size of the family. So okay. if you go to our website, which is www.networkforeducation.org, there is a, a icon you can click on that talks about the applications and then go through there and you can see exactly where the poverty, that 300 percent of the poverty line is f based upon each size of the family. Oh, great. Okay. That, that's great. And um, so they, is there like a, a, a period for the application to be um, um, what do you call it, when the application is being um, executed, you know what I'm saying, um, serviced or they have to go through, is there a time frame like three weeks, four weeks, six weeks, uh, minimum, you know, lead time, let's say, we're talking for September, let's say. Right. Uh, like how, how many months or how many weeks before September do they have to apply if they think they're eligible? We are accepting applications now. We, okay. That opened up uh, January 1. Processing so is the we word can, I was trying to We find. can begin accepting applications mm -hmm. uh, right away. Uh, and I, earlier is better because um, there is a formula that's used that gives preferential um, status to the people who s register early. So get those applications in. Oh, great. Definitely. Uh, the cutoff is June 15th, oh, okay. both for applications and for donations. So um, For September's for school year. For the school next year. school year, mm -hmm. absolutely. Uh, so approximately in mid-July, we are obligated to then inform schools and the scholarship recipients uh, how much money they get if they're a if they qualify. Mm -hmm. And so they'll know well in advance of the registration period uh, so they can make the right decisions of what will fit for them and Great. try to make, make it happen. Mm -hmm. So the funds go, the, they're deposited from the businesses that give you a donation? Right. So they're not coming from the state? No, they're not. They are mm -hmm. private donations going to a private charity. It's not for, a voucher program. No, and that's a, a very distinct difference. Mm -hmm. Vouchers are monies that go through the state treasury and then are distributed from there. For example, um, there are voucher programs that currently are used for pre-K pre programs and for colleges that even can be used at religious schools. Uh, this program, the NEO scholarship program, are uh, for scholarships for K through 12 students, and they, as you saw in the video, it's for students in who are looking for options for the out of district public schools, private schools, or for homeschooling expenses. Mm -hmm. So um, those are private choices that the families make for which school that money will go towards. Uh, Neo does not make the choice; we just mm -hmm. facilitate it. Oh, that's great! Oh, that's great. Um, is there anything else we should know or the parents should know about that could help them to make this decision or sure. try to find a choice on, either on your website information? Or? Absolutely. A um, couple things that are interesting to note, this is only our second year of operation and in our first year uh, NEO awarded more than 100 financial need-based scholarships totaling more than $125,000 to highly deserving children under the education tax credit program. 90% uh, of the scholarship recipients qualified for free or reduced lunch programs. So this really is helping the families that need it most. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a unique opportunity for them. Not all public schools fit all students and this is a way for kids to not be trapped by their zip code assigned school. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the other interesting things is that um, these are kids who are not being otherwise served in their public schools uh, who are looking for a change. This isn't that the, the scholarship is not so great an amount that it will initiate families to move if they're already happy with their public school. Mm -hmm. These are for the kids who are maybe being bullied or otherwise not having their educational needs met. 
So it provides a, a real opportunity for them to go where their education can best mm -hmm. uh, be served. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, additionally, um, homeschoolers can qualify for this uh, scholarship program, and we are currently the only tax credit scholarship program in the country that includes this for homeschoolers. Amazing. Uh, homeschoolers can qualify up to an average of uh, 625, I'm sorry, $625 uh, to cover homeschool expenses. So it can be anywhere from books, uh, enrollment in a music program, mm. uh, like a karate program, mm -hmm. anything that would qualify as educational expenses. That's amazing. Oh, we're so thankful that that's in New Hampshire. But I do think maybe we should talk about the challenges that the organizations have, and just briefly. Yes, there are challenges. Um, I believe it was on our very second day of operation. A lawsuit was filed, and uh, to keep these scholarships from being used at religious schools, um, as I said, the, the businesses and NEO do not direct the money to those schools. It's based upon the family choice. It is currently under review by the New Hampshire Supreme Court. There was a hearing last week on Wednesday. Um, now we sit and wait. We'll have to wait for their decision to come out. Um, it was a very interesting um, hearing. Uh, you can see a little p article about it at the Network for Educational Opportunities website. Uh, there were a few interesting themes to that hearing. Um, NEO believes that parents are the best ones to make the decisions for their children's education. Uh, it's not something that uh, the government should decide, but something the parents should decide. Uh, and that these are private donations, not government or state funds that are being used for these private decisions. Um, and currently, the federal government gives vouchers and loans for use at colleges and universities, including religious post-secondary schools, obviously Pell Grants and other that's student right. aid forms That's go right. go to religious uh, universities, uh, and currently the state of New Hampshire receives gives vouchers for use at any daycare, and that does include religious pre-K programs. Mm -hmm. So it is our sincere hope, our fervent hope, that uh, eventually uh, this will be eligible for use at religious schools too. So that is consistent with how other monies are being mm -hmm. used for other educational options for families. Mm -hmm. um, we do have to wait and just see how that goes. Um, it was a very interesting thing. Uh, the Associate Attorney General for New Hampshire said the family is deciding which school receives that funding at the end of the day, whether it be a public school in another district, whether it be a home school, or whether it be a private school, which could either be religious or otherwise. The decision maker is the family. So um, it is our sincere hope that the Supreme Court will decide in, in the favor of this being uh, truly mm -hmm. any educational choice for the families that qualify. Well, there's definitely a need if there were 100 families being served last month, last year, um, unfortunately, this, this, this year. We had to uh, decline many, many families oh. who um, wanted to use it for f attending a private religious school. Um, surprise, it's very interesting. We've can still received a lot of applicants who are hopeful that this will be mm -hmm. um, eligible for next school year. Mm -hmm. uh, families are looking for those options. So and perhaps it's good that they put in their application, even though it's kind of in limbo right now. Perhaps, yes, please do. Because you never know when the decision will come in from e the Supreme Court. Exactly. Uh, I would encourage families that are looking f to go to a religious school next year to still put in their applications. It's our hope that uh, they would be eligible for next year. We mm -hmm. don't know, but uh, if you don't apply, <laughs> you don't right. you don't get it. Right, right. That's so. fantastic. It's a great program. Uh, we have saw that uh, in different uh, studies, families are very happy with having those options for their their families. There was a study done, I'm trying to find it. Um, yeah, families. There there are several uh, posts on our website where you can see different studies that have said families that are able to direct their children's education are very, very satisfied with the kind of education their children receive. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what it all, all boils down to. Uh, kids only get one crack at their 12, K through 12 education, and any parent is going to want to have the best fit for their child. Exactly. And we're there to try to help make it happen for them. Just, just amazing. And we're so glad that you came 
and uh, and spoke with, about this program with us. This is what the show is all about: is to educate the folks out there and let let you know what new things. This is rather new. It is uh, program. Uh, and and pro most folks probably don't even know that it exists, as I didn't know it existed. So I'm happy to bring that to the folks. Um, well, is there anything else there you have for information for us? Uh, just go to our website. It is networkforeducation.org. Uh, there you, businesses can find more information about making the tax uh, credit qualifying uh, donations to the organization as well as applications for students and families mm -hmm. so it's all there at the website uh, and contact information too so if your questions aren't addressed uh, there are uh, emails and phone numbers in case uh, you have further questions okay that's great now if that is complete then maybe we should get on to the alert that sure. we have for the folks we there is something uh, very pressing happening uh, this week at the State House and um, we'd like to let you know about that as well. Um, there is a S Senate bill, and the number is 343, with amendment, or as amended. And this is very concerning for parents, because with the statewide assessment that your children will be taking, it's called the Smarter Balance. That's in 2015 that there will be questions on the assessment about the child's uh, psychological, they're looking for psychological data, in, uh, including assessment of non-cognitive skills or attributes, and psychological resources, and mindsets, and learning strategies, and attitudes, and dispositions, and, or social skills. Those are not academic. They're not. They're um, subjective. They're not objectively scored, um, although they could contribute to uh, a, a student's work ethic or other issues that involve how they do at school. They're not directly academic related. And frankly, um, it's questionable whether they should be part of that to the point where um, it's been, th this has come up in different committee hearings over this last session. Um, so much so that the New Hampshire Department of Education did ask the Smarter Balanced Ass Assessment Consortium for clarification on that. Uh, currently, the Smarter Balanced Ass Assessment Consortium has on their website that um, these dispositional questions are included. I'll actually read it right from yes. their website. Um, it says, um, let's see. Smarter Balance recognizes that college readiness encompasses a wide array of knowledge, skills, and dispositions, only some of which will be measured by the Smarter Balanced assessments. So their website does include that, yet uh, the New Hampshire Department of Education received a letter uh, in February saying that those questions are not included. So there is ambiguity there. That's a nice way to say it. There's certainly it's questionable. We don't know if it's on there. We don't know that it's not. And so uh, the interesting part, the part that relates to Senate Bill 343, is that we were seeking an amendment to specifically keep dispositional questions off the assessment, mm -hmm. just for that reassurance to make sure it was absolutely clear that in New Hampshire, dispositional questions would not be included. Uh, however the House Education Committee in their sub uh, work session last week uh, ITL that they, in fact they want to ITL the entire bill so there is no guarantee to New Hampshire parents that these soft questions these attitudes values and belief questions would even um, be excluded from those quest those tests so um, it was said in committee that the um, New Hampshire Department of Education instead would simply have this letter on their website, and that should mm. be sufficient reassurance. And that is not. House Education Committee believes it to be adequate. Yeah, unless it's in law. Since it is a consortium and it includes many other states. Correct. Uh, and I don't think they want to have a separate test for New Hampshire. And, um, it, and that would kind of skew their results as well, because they're looking for the, the, all their states' um, 
results together, aggregated, Ex not, you know, well, exactly. this state wants this, this state wants that. Th that's the whole purpose of this um, one test across the board per grade level. That's the whole principle behind it. And whether you like it or not, you can debate that. But so having separate questions for New Hampshire students is definitely inconsistent with that purpose. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can see why parents would have concerns about it. Right. Well, Kansas has withdrawn from the Smarter Balance. I think Florida has withdrawn from the Smarter Balance. More and more states are. Because they can't control the test. Simple as that, as, as we're seeing here. We have a problem with the testing our students' dispositions and psychological data for, for the state's con information, and it's none of their business. Well, they're not directly related to the academic information that is uh, being taught to the students. Further, it's not fair to teachers. 20% uh, of their evaluations are going to be based on these assessments, and it's on kids' values, attitudes, and beliefs. Mm -hmm. That's not appropriate to re be reflected in their mm -hmm. professional evaluations. No. And, and if they're trying to manipulate a, a child or a student's values, attitudes, and beliefs, then our government is doing something that perhaps we as Americans don't want our government to be doing. And, and we don't know for sure because right now those tests are not shared with the parents even after the point of them being administered. Um, there have been bills submitted to um, the legislature this year asking for that disclosure af even afterwards. Just like with the SATs or other standardized tests, parents are able to see what exactly is the content what are the kids asked mm -hmm. and right now it's all a big black hole nobody knows for sure and where this information is going so mm -hmm. it, it makes it, it leaves a lot of unanswered questions and uh, all we've been asking is to get access mm -hmm. to the information let parents know what's going on mm -hmm. and to, to not have dispositional questions and frankly that's consistent with a bill that was passed in 2013 that's right there was a Senate bill was Senate bill 48 last year that expressly removed that from New Hampshire law uh, it was approved in the Senate version removed from the House version and in the committee of conference mm -hmm. they kept it out so it is the will of the legislature to not include dispositional questions mm -hmm. yet um, this year they're, they won't give families that protection. No. So it's concerning, and okay. uh, I would recommend that if other people in your audience have concerns, uh, call or email the House Education Committee. Uh, their email is House Education Committee at ledge, so for legislature, leg dot state dot nh dot us. That would hit that would email the entire committee. Mm -hmm. uh, they will be executing, executing that bill on Tuesday the 22nd at 10.30 in the Legislative Office Building Room 207. So tomorrow morning they'll mm -hmm. need to hear from you uh, as soon as possible. Okay. Uh, and then it would be expected for SB 343 to go in front of the entire House likely the following mm -hmm. week. Mm -hmm. So that would be the right time to contact your, your own area mm -hmm. representatives about it. And folks, if you, if you think we're just talking through our hats here, that we're just making something out of nothing, if you want to speak more to um, David Murataki, he is a school board member in Nashua, on the school board in Nashua, who has received comments from the Nashua teachers. And one of the comments that the teachers had for taking the um, practice test, the Smarter Balance practice test, was that seems that this test was designed more as a psychological or sociological experiment not as a measure of academic learning who created this test anyway couldn't have been by professional educators so folks the teachers are are pleading with the legislature with the parents that this should not be should not be in our schools and so hopefully, if you'd like to talk to David Murataki more about it, Representative Murataki, um, you could reach him through the Nashua School Board website. I'm sure his email is there. Oh, absolutely. It would um, also be on the state 
mm -hmm. uh, House of Representatives mm -hmm. website. Right. Uh, you can look it up by uh, representative's name or by That's their true. district. That's true, too. Okay, and hit our phone number as well. So, folks, this is very concerning. So we had to throw that in at the end. Uh, so we'll, that's where we'll be tomorrow. Oh, <laughs> it's at the State House. So, folks, uh, we appreciate you joining us today. And next week, we'll see you again. Uh, thank you, John.